Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first installment of the AISC Educator Webinar Series. This session is titled Resources for Steel Educators, Tips and Treasures. Today is July 22nd, 2020. My name is Christy Sattler, and I am the Senior Engineer for University Relations at AISC, and I will be hosting today's session. I have a few brief announcements before we get things underway. First, you'll notice that there is a Q&A window on your console. Please use that window if you have any questions for our speakers. We will answer questions at the end of the presentation. You can also use that Q&A window if you have any technical difficulties. We will do our best to help you with those issues. Along the bottom of your screen, you will notice a series of buttons. The button that looks like a piece of notebook paper contains the resources. In there, you will find a link to the university program's website, as well as a PDF copy of today's presentation. Today, we will be sharing several links to different aspects of the AISC website, so the PDF handout is intended to serve as a reference for you to be able to access those after the presentation. And finally, I do need to let you know for legal reasons that today's presentation is being recorded. I would first like to introduce the other speakers who are joining me today. All three of our guests are members of the AISC Partners in Education Committee. First, we have Jeffrey Kalis, who is a practicing engineer and project manager at Plant Construction Company. Next, we have Judy Liu, who is a professor in the Civil and Construction Engineering Department at Oregon State University. She is also the current chair of the Partners in Education Committee. And finally, we have Tim Rozowski, who is a practicing architect and professor emeritus of construction management at Michigan State University. He is the former chair of the Partners in Education Committee. Here is a quick look at what we will cover during today's session. We will start with an overview of AISC University programs. Next, we will take a look at the variety of resources that are available to AISC educator members, followed by a tour of our teaching aid library. At that point, our guest speakers will be sharing some insight into their favorite teaching aids. After that, we will discuss some of the programs and resources that are available for your students. And then we will wrap up with our Q&A session. So as a reminder, you can use that Q&A window on your console to submit your questions at any point during the presentation. So first, let's take a look at AISC University programs. Our programs are intended to assist in the development of future professionals who are knowledgeable in structural steel behavior and design. That is accomplished through a variety of opportunities, resources, and events that are made available to both students and steel educators. We strive to foster the career development of faculty members through support of your teaching, research, and service activities. Here are the members of the university program staff. For those of you who we have not had the opportunity to meet in person yet, we hope, hope this helps put names with the faces that have been talking with you through email and over the phone. Christina Harbour is the Director of Education, and she oversees all of the university program's activities, as well as AISC's continuing education events and programs. Maria Manukin is the Education Program Manager, and she manages many of the programs and activities for university programs. As I mentioned earlier, I'm the Senior Engineer for University Relations, and I focus more on the technical side of university programs, and that includes managing and curating our teaching aids. Eric Martin and Sean Farron both provide the administrative support for university programs, and I will say that we definitely could not do what we do without the two of them. We would also like to acknowledge the members of the AISC Partners in Education, or the PI Committee. This committee is composed of engineering, construction management, and architecture educators, as well as consulting engineers and steel fabricators. Their mission is to help universities prepare students to become professionals who are knowledgeable in the use of structural steel through several different facets, including curriculum development, faculty development, student activities, and industry interaction. You will notice that our three guest speakers today are all members of the PI Committee, and we again thank them for joining us. Okay, so now let's just jump right into the resources that are available to you as an educator. First of all, AISC offers a complimentary educator membership to educators who are currently employed full-time by an accredited university, technical school, or vocational school in the United States. It looks like we have a few international professors on the line today. I will mention here that several of the things that we will discuss today are exclusively for those teaching in the United States, including the AISC educator membership benefits, as well as the educator forum. 
However, there are some other things, like our teaching aid library and other resources on the AISC website that are readily available for your free access. Here is a reminder of the benefits that are included in the AISC Educator Membership. First, you receive discounts on all AISC seminars, conferences, and publications. We will talk more specifically about additional benefits regarding the steel construction manual in a few minutes. You also get subscription to Modern Steel Construction, which is our monthly magazine that features recent projects, news, and industry updates, as well as Engineering Journal, which is our quarterly peer-reviewed publication. And each week, you receive the AISC NSBA Bulletin through email, which contains quick bites of industry news. And finally, you receive online access to resources and downloads on our website. Just a quick pointer on how and where to find those resources on the AISC website. First of all, make sure that you log into the site with your membership account. Within the Publications tab of the website, you will find electronic copies of the Engineering Journal, Historic Standards and Manuals, as well as the ability to download any of our 35 design guides. Every spring, AISC hosts NASCC, the Steel Conference, where members of all aspects of the steel industry gather in one place and exchange steel-related knowledge. You will find engineers, architects, researchers, fabricators, erectors, producers, and detailers all in one place. There are over 130 technical sessions, several workshops, lots of networking opportunities, and a massive exhibit hall, which is shown in this photo. It is a great opportunity to get and stay involved with the latest things happening in the structural steel industry. And note that there is a discounted registration fee for AISC educator members. The 2021 event is slated to be held in Louisville, Kentucky at the Kentucky International Convention Center over April 14th to the 16th. In addition to a discounted conference registration, we also invite educators to participate in a special educator session. This event typically includes breakfast, followed by a couple of presentations about the latest and greatest in teaching methods, resources, and tools for steel education. We strive to make it interactive for you, so it also includes discussion time for you to interact with other educators. Sometimes there is even a group activity, as you can see in this photo where the 2019 participants were challenged to a timed tower building contest. Full-time faculty members who teach in the United States uh, who attend the, the educator session are also eligible to receive up to $300 in travel assistance from AISC. So switching gears a little bit, let's talk about the Educator Forum. The Educator Forum is an online platform to foster collaboration and interaction among members of the steel education community. There are opportunities to share knowledge, engage in discussion, and share resources. We will take a quick tour today through some of the popular features of the Educator Forum. Before we do that, I just want to note that if you do not already have access to the Educator Forum, you can simply request access through our website on the Educator Forum page. There, you will also find more information, including a copy of the Terms of Agreement. You will be asked to complete a quick form where we will collect your contact information as well as the email address for your login. Note that since it is a Google site, users are required to have a Google account for access. If you do not have a Google account, don't worry. You can create one through the, inter the initial login process. We can help walk you through that process if needed. So first, the Educator Forum is equipped with file sharing capabilities. Within this file cabinet, you have the opportunity to download and access any of the files that have been shared by your peers. And you can also upload your own to share. Some popular items that have been shared include case studies, articles, and PowerPoint presentations. You can also find links to all of the previous tip sheets, which is the monthly newsletter that comes by email. Uploading is a pretty straightforward process. Simply click the Add File or Add Link button and follow the prompts. We do ask that you also provide a brief description along with the file. I will also point out here that there is a separate page for practice exams, which functions in the exact same way. Those are just hosted on their own page to keep them from getting lost. Next, there is a photo gallery. It is a similar format to the general file sharing, where you can download any existing content or upload your own. 
Currently, you'll find a variety of photos from job sites, including general steel framing, shear studs, connections, fireproofing, and the erection process. The Building Projects tab, just below the Photo Gallery tab, contains similar content in the sense that there are photos of steel building projects under construction. They are grouped by projects so that you can see several different aspects of construction for the same project. This is also probably a great place to note that the entire educator forum is searchable, so you can use the search box in the upper right-hand corner if there's anything specific that you're looking for. There is a page specifically for sharing videos. And these can be uploaded as individual files or as links to something on YouTube. Similar to the other pages, simply click the corresponding button for what it is that you want to upload and follow the prompts. There are several different types of videos already available, including construction time lapses, lateral torsional buckling demos, other steel failure mechanisms, and bolt limit states. I mentioned earlier that the forum provides the opportunity to engage in conversation with other steel educators. And one great way to do that is through the discussion board. There are a variety of topics already out there, so you can join the conversation by reading what's there and add your own comments. Additionally, you can start an entirely new conversation by clicking the new post button. You can ask a question or share some helpful knowledge to the group. Some of the most recent posts focus on the challenges associated with moving to online learning. There are some lively discussions with helpful tidbits of information. So I encourage you to take a look and join the conversation. We previously mentioned that there were benefits related to the SEAL construction manual. So now let's talk more about that. Complimentary desk copies of the steel construction manual and the seismic design manual are made available to full-time faculty in the United States who are teaching steel design courses. Essentially, one desk copy per manual per printing is allowed for full-time faculty or for adjunct faculty who will be teaching a course in the upcoming semester. All desk copy requests must be submitted on university letterhead, and that can be a hard copy or through email. And we ask that you describe the course and semester that you are teaching. Please know that the digital edition of the 15th edition SEAL construction manual is also part of our desk copy program. This can be particularly helpful for educators who need to quickly grab a table image or share a page from the manual digitally with their class. You can contact us at universityprograms at AISD.org for more information about the program. Each year, AISC awards a Millick Fellowship to one non-tenured university faculty member to help jumpstart their research program. It is a four-year award at $50,000 per year. The funds are provided for conducting research to meet the long-term needs of the structural steel industry, as well as for developing graduate students for academic and design careers in the structural steel industry. We are currently accepting applications for the next award cycle. Applications are due by September 18th, and they are reviewed by AISC's Committee on Research. You can visit AISC.org slash Millick to learn more about the requirements for the application. Last but certainly not least, we have our Educator Awards. These awards honor individuals who have contributed to the success of the fabricated structural steel industry through their research, teaching, or a lifetime of outstanding service. Here are the photos of this year's winners. The awards are typically given to the recipients at NASCC, the SEAL conference. Unfortunately, we were unable to do so this year since the conference was canceled amidst the pandemic. However, we have put together short video interviews with these award winners, along with video interviews with our industry and design award winners. All of those are available at the link shown on the slide. And those videos may be worth sharing with your students as they give some good insight into all of their different career paths and interests in the steel industry. And remember, all, the, all of these links are available in the handouts that are found in the Resources tab on your console. Okay, so now let's talk more about our teaching aids. We have an entire library of teaching aids on the AISC website to assist universities in preparing students to become knowledgeable professionals in the use of structural steel. These are available for download and are free of charge to educators, students, and others within the academic engineering community. You will see that the teaching aids have been divided among three different academic disciplines, architecture, civil and architectural engineering, and construction management. There's quite a bit of overlap among the disciplines, so some teaching aids may appear in more than one category. 
There are a variety of formats here, including PowerPoint presentations with thorough slide notes, photo libraries, and videos. Topics include building case studies, architecturally exposed structural steel, bolting and welding, bridge design, and seismic design. You will also find a collection of design examples from the steel construction manual. The AISC Committee on Manuals prepares a set of examples to illustrate the application of the provisions in the specification. The complete set is available for free download, but it's quite lengthy. So with the help of the PI Committee, a condensed version has been made available here in the Teaching Aid Library that includes 45 example problems that would most likely be addressed in a first semester structural steel design course. At this point, I will be turning it over to our guest speakers to share their favorite teaching aids with us. And we'll start with Tim, who will give us a highlight of a few of the construction management teaching aids. So at this point, you'll want to turn your attention to the demo window on your console. In this segment, we'd like to highlight some of the uh, teaching aids that are available to describe the construction of steel frame buildings. Um, we have uh, a digital, a library of digital images as well as PowerPoints available. They're free downloads, free use. You can use them any way they want. Useful for a variety of disciplines, civil, architectural, engineering programs, architecture, construction management, construction engineering. They're quick to download just a few seconds and have been technically reviewed by AISC for safety and accuracy. Uh, include slide descriptions sufficient to explain the images and can be used in class lectures or could be assigned uh, for self-navigation by students. They're descriptive in nature rather than calculation-based and useful for introducing a steel design course or materials and methods course or construction management courses. The first aid is the library of digital images. And you'll notice at the top there are the three tabs, architecture, civil and architectural engineering, and trust management. And you can navigate back and forth between those. Some of the tools are located under different tabs. The digital library consists of, of uh, several hundred slides uh, organized by category. I've just highlighted a couple here on uh, temporary bracing and final bolt up. So a final bolt up example slide, and then several on temporary bracing. Moving on to PowerPoints, uh, the uh, important PowerPoint is a four-story building case study. And there are two versions of this. One was the technical and the other is construction management oriented. The technical is more scheduling project logistics uh, related information. Both of the PowerPoints are based on uh, the construction of a four-story office building. Uh, the building is 80,000 square feet. Uh, and used uh, 964 pieces of steel with a typical base size of 30 by 30. Um, the, um, it took 28 hoisting days for this project, which averaged about 35 pieces hoisted per day and used approximately 400 tons or 10 pounds per square foot average of structural steel, which is a, a fairly typical uh, average for a building of this nature. Uh, the, the PowerPoint sequentially takes uh, students through construction from start to finish, and starting with detailing and ordering of material, moving through fabrication, and then a number of uh, field-related uh, erection uh, slides. Discusses crew size as well as equipment used. Um, there's an animation uh, for this, which shows the lifting of uh, each piece of steel. This building was constructed in six sequence and used two different hoisting locations. So they moved the crane from sequence to sequence. You'll also note that the building uses uh, masonry, elevator, and stair towers to provide lateral stability. There are some scheduling uh, slides that show uh, the sequence of activities as well as the duration of those so students get a sense of how long and in what order activities take place. Moving on to other PowerPoints, there's a PowerPoint which is targeted towards construction engineering and construction management students addressing job site layout, mobilization, equipment, and coordination. This uh, slideshow is based on uh, the manual of steel practice or uh, manual of practice and uh, addresses the key considerations for the contractor in organizing the site to support the steel construction activities. So important, uh, steel is a very uh, a heavy influencer on site logistics because of the size of the crane, location of the crane, length of lifts, as well as the need to provide laydown areas uh, for, uh, for materials after, delivered, after delivery. So um, issues such as access roads, temporary facilities, um, the uh, underground utilities that may exist, soil conditions, um, 
which may influence crane position or support of the crane um, are addressed. Um, and lastly, we'll move on to some technical topics. These are, um, are organized under the construction management tab, but really could be used by any of the, of the uh, disciplines there. Uh, some of the technical topics that we've highlighted here are bolting and welding, composite construction and cambering, uh, and then uh, connections and bracing. Uh, there are some additional programs, architecturally exposed steel and crane selection. Uh, bolting and welding addresses what you'd expect, uh, high strength bolts, bolt sizes, bolt configurations, bolt types, uh, as well as field uh, inspection and quality control. And welding addresses uh, weld types, weld configurations, weld size, plan indications for welds. Moving on, uh, composite construction and cambering. Uh, these include a number of field photos uh, demonstrating the installation of composite uh, construction and, and uh, cambered uh, beams. Discusses advantages, disadvantages, when they can be used, when they shouldn't be used, uh, as well as uh, plan indications for both uh, shear studs and for cambering. And then lastly, bracing and configurations. Uh, this is uh, a shorter show, about 35 slides, which addresses um, key elements for lateral stability, including moment resisting frames and braced frames, both eccentric and, and uh, concentric frames. So um, lastly, we just hope that you will explore these tools and uh, find them uh, useful for your classes. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks so much for that insight, Tim. Um, and next we'll have Judy, who will talk about a PowerPoint that she likes to use uh, to give an introduction to steel buildings. Hello, my favorite teaching aid is an introductory PowerPoint that pulls from AISC teaching aids and the AISC educator forum. So first, let me show you how to access these resources. First, on the AISC Educator Forum, go to File Sharing and scroll down to find the Intro to Steel folder. And in this folder, you can find an AISC building PowerPoint, which we'll be featuring today. Um, and then also, if you go up to the AISC WET Case Study folder, you can find a 3D AutoCAD model of a case study building uh, from that teaching aid, as well as a Google SketchUp version of that model. Uh, WET stands for Web Enhanced Teaching. So let's go there next on the teaching aids website. So uh, this teaching aid was created when course websites were just starting to become commonplace. So what this means for us is that there are a lot of great visuals, including animations to use in class and to make available on a course site for students to view on their own time. So I could talk all day about how I use the various components of this teaching aid in my course, but the main items to highlight here today are the architectural and structural drawings for that case study building, as well as some PowerPoint slides with photographs and descriptions. I also pull photographs from the four-story building case study, um, as well as some collections of photographs um, on the educator forum. Some are from the building projects page, and some are from the photo gallery page. So let's take a look now at that introductory PowerPoint. So this is one of the first things I do in my course right after going over the course syllabus and organization. The main portion of the PowerPoint that I'd like to share today um, is really intended to um, introduce the AISD, AISC case study building, which I also use for design problems and as the basis for the design project in the course. Uh, the intent here is really to provide the big picture of typical steel frame buildings before we start talking about how to design the various components. And so what we start with are some architectural and structural drawings uh, for the building and looking at the 3D model. And then basically we go from the ground up. So starting with the first floor architectural plan, the structural plan, um, and some photos of what that looks like for some typical steel buildings under construction. 
And then we move on to the second and third floor architectural and structural plans, the 3D model, and then some steel joist buildings under construction. Also, we take a look at what if we use filler beams instead of open web joist, what does that look like, as well as what goes into the floor system as far as the metal deck, concrete, and so on. When we get up to the roof um, and the mechanical penthouse in the building, we start to be able to see the brace frames a little more clearly, and we use that opportunity then to transition into connections. And so showing some different types of connections, also talk a little bit about things like load flow, um, and also assumptions for simply supported beams and so on. And then we get into some discussion of non-structural elements among some other things, talking about load flow for wind pressures acting on the faces of the buildings and elements that contribute to uh, the dead loads in the building. PDF of these slides um, are posted to, is posted to the course site for the students to reference. And I continue to make use of these slides throughout the term. So if I can, can transition here to another PowerPoint. So for example, when we start our discussion of flectoral members, we go back to a number of the same slides and remind ourselves about things like beams, girders, load flow, when and why uh, we assume a simply supported beam, and so on. So thanks for joining me on this mini tour of my favorite teaching aid. You can find this PowerPoint and more in the AISC Educator Forum. All right, thanks, Judy. That seems like a great uh, introduction for students to, to see things uh, through the steel construction process. Um, and last, we will hear from Jeffrey, um, who will provide an overview of um, the design studio case studies. For me, I'm going to describe more about what I like the most, which is marrying up for the students real life imagery and concepts that start from detail all the way to construction and including the construction sequencing and fabrication. So when you go into the design studio case studies, you'll go ahead and click on that and you'll have some presentations you can download. And of course, you'll end up getting them through the standard process of WinZip. And then at that point, you can just download them and go ahead and look at the presentation. So I'm going to go over two presentations. I might go a little fast here, so I apologize. But the Creekside Residence is a very good example of that marriage in describing architecture and structure, as well as some very nice imagery of the construction itself. You go ahead and you got your acknowledgments. You can you also got the terms of this presentation. And then you got the, the, a lot of good imagery related to interior and exterior and how you can marry the architecture with the structure, which is they seems to be a minimalistic approach and idea and mindset behind this project. You even got the cost, construction duration, when it was completed, square footage. So it also gives a more realistic context as well as understanding the architectural philosophy behind that. You get floor plans associated to it. And again, a lot of nice interior imagery attributed to this. And nice sight images associated to the canopies that are using double angles with a cable, which can be in its own little design study for the, the students to design that canopy in itself and take reactions back to the base building and so on. And they have really nice imagery associated to it. A good thing to note about this project, they also married up um, sustainability where you got reclaimed water. And that's just something that's good to know. They have really good videos associated to how the building was built or fabricated, especially portions of the building. And when you go through this presentation, you can click into these videos. And if you have trouble accessing the videos, you can also just download the videos themselves. And so they go over through the construction sequencing, doing columns and beams and then girders and then the roof and so on. And it's a really good video to just use for your, for your coursework. 
Um, another key point that I'd like to describe is is just they have really nice details. It's obviously a CAD drawing that they manipulated the, the colors to be more clean. And you can see a detail and you can see the final construction. And they even have, again, additional videos attributed to them and construction photography during the process. And you can see the final construction with the details. And you can see that in this case, the structure is the architecture. And so it's good to know and teach our future engineers that you want to design your building so well that it's a shame to cover it up. And so go, they go through details, the canopies, they also have the eccentric connection. Maybe that's another study that can be done or design the entire canopy in itself. There's another really good presentation and I'll go really fast with this one and it's relating to making stairs that are attributed to steel and it's all bent metal and they go through the fabrication of, of water jet cutting to how you bend the steel to welding them together and doing grind smooth, creating segments associated to how do you actually construct it. And it's just, it's a really good presentation with a lot of nice imagery of how to build and think outside the box in terms of maximizing your, your efficiency of construction by building in panels rather than, than um, than just thinking, oh, I can just do everything in the shop and ship one giant piece. It's not possible. So it kind of brings realism to that. That's a couple of videos that I didn't go through all the way. Just, I want you guys to spend the time to look at it. But in a nutshell, those are my two favorite presentations. Thank you very much. Okay. Great. Thank you to, to all of our speakers there um, for giving us some good insight to their favorite favorite teaching aids. Um, and just a reminder, we do um, have all of them here for the Q&A session. So if you have any specific questions related to what they shared today, um, please go ahead and submit those through the Q&A window. Um, and then we, along the lines with the teaching aids, we're always looking for new and improved teaching aids to add to our collection. In order to promote that, we have a teaching aid development program and we are now accepting proposals for the next cycle. Grants will range from $1,000 to $10,000, and we expect to award up to five grants for the 2020 cycle. AISC may even invite the developer to present their work at a future educator session at NASCC. We request that proposals be no longer than three pages in length, and proposals are due on August 31st. They can be submitted to me by email at the address on the slide. More information about the proposal process is available on our website, along with a list of hot topics. You can also contact me with any questions. Last year, we awarded grants for the development of six new teaching aids. These will be rolled out starting this fall. And we plan to host webinars with each of the developers to provide an overview of the components and their suggestions for implementation. So be on the lookout for that. In the meantime, here's a sneak peek at what will be available. In September, there will be a 3D web-based connection viewer that allows students to view and interact with a collection of steel connections using their phones or web browser. The viewer is intended to help illustrate what connections look like in 3D, illustrate different limit states, and will also include 2D drawings and calculations. In October, another web-based interactive tool will become available. This one can be used to demonstrate structural steel design concepts and it will allow students to explore relationships between various parameters like applied loads, number dimensions, and framing layout. In January, we plan to launch three new teaching aids. The first is a series of lighthearted and humorous YouTube videos. Topics will include common misconceptions in steel design, how to solve a particular steel design problem, and student interviews with steel legends. Next, there will be a set of teaching modules that will focus on the effects of fire on structural steel, starting at the material level and working up to member and system level behavior. Also in January, there will be a new teaching aid focused on steel connections that will include models for producing 3D printed connections. And finally, in May of next year, we will launch a new teaching aid focused on helping students conceptually lay out and select a building steel gravity system. Again, we're very excited to roll out all of these new teaching aids over the coming year. In addition to the teaching aids available through university programs, there are a few other resources on the AISC website that you may find helpful for your courses. First of all, there are the Education Archives. This is a full collection of our recorded webinars, NASDC sessions, conference proceedings, and articles. 
The resources themselves are free, and then there are quizzes to obtain PDH credits that are available for an additional fee. You will see that the whole collection is searchable, and there is also an index list where you can find these resources organized by keyword. Next, one of the complementary services provided by our Steel Solution Center is the development of conceptual solutions. These are developed to, to demonstrate the viability of a steel framing system for a specific building project, and we now even have the capability to do that for bridge projects. As part of that service, there are several sample building prototypes available on the Steel Solutions Center page. Those include prototypes for healthcare, multi-story residential, office buildings, and parking structures. For example, here are snapshots of a few pages of the prototype for the conventional steel framing study for an office building. You will find things like a loading summary, steel quantity takeoff, architectural floor plans, typical framing plans, column layouts, and frame elevations. Cover to cover, this document is only 12 pages, and it provides a really good overview of the typical framing and project components. One of the newer things that we're really excited about are the virtual reality resources. There's a series of tours available on our website at AISD.org slash VR. Right now, there is a video of the new core Yamato steel mill as well as a tour of the Atlas Tube Mill. AISC hopes to add to this collection so that there are videos available to encapsulate the full life cycle of steel, following it from the mill to fabrication to erection on the job site. The videos are best viewed using a VR headset, but there are a couple other options as well. There are phone viewers, such as Google Cardboard, that are inexpensive attachments to help turn your cell phone into a virtual reality viewer. Or these videos can simply be viewed on YouTube. They are 360-degree videos, so you can pan around the video during the narration. Again, all of these videos are available for free at the web address on the slide, and we encourage you to stay tuned for more videos. We are also working on a VR tour of a high-rise construction site that can specifically be used as a teaching tool. It will include narration by the engineer of record, and that should be available by 2021. Last, but certainly, certainly not least, let's talk about the programs and resources specifically for your students. Similar to the educator membership, our AISC student membership is free for students. We even automatically enroll them when they purchase a manual through the student manual discount program. We also give them their first year of professional membership for free after they graduate. That student membership gets them access to the thousands of pages of technical information on the AISC website, as well as free downloads like the design guides. They also get member prices on other publications and seminars, as well as complimentary electronic access to Modern Steel Construction and the Engineering Journal. And finally, they can get a complimentary pass to NASCC, the Steel Conference. The picture shown here is one of my favorites. This is a group of students from Penn State at the conference exhibit hall in 2019 along with Professor Lou Geschwinder and AISC's President Charlie Carter. It's a great opportunity for the students to see and meet different people in the industry. At the conference, we offer some opportunities exclusively for students through the Students Connecting with Industry sessions. This set of sessions includes a presentation by leaders in the industry, lunch, and what we call Direct Connect, which gives the students the chance to network with representatives from over 50 companies. It is a less formal environment than a career fair, and it's a good opportunity to talk with practicing engineers and learn more about what they do and the company that they re represent. Students who attend the full set of sessions are eligible for a stipend to help cover some of the travel costs and also receive a ticket to the conference dinner. When students are able to carpool and share hotel rooms, the stipend can help offset a good portion of their cost. We offer several scholarships for junior, seniors, and master students. There are over $138,000 worth of scholarships that are up for grabs this year. These scholarships are funded by the AISC Education Foundation, as well as local steel associations who like to give funds to students attending schools in their area. As part of the application, we ask students to submit their transcript and a letter of recommendation, along with a short essay describing their interest in structural steel. Applications are typically due in May. This is a photo of a few of the scholarship winners in 2019 with AISC President Charlie Carter. These students had the opportunity to attend NASCC, the SEAL conference, and serve as student moderators who helped with the sessions um, that were streamed online. 
We sponsor a couple of student design competitions. The Student Field Bridge Competition is one of our premier programs for college students, where teams from colleges and universities from across the country design and fabricate a steel bridge according to the competition rules. The bridge must span approximately 20 feet, carry 2,500 pounds, and meet project specifications. Elements of the competition include time construction, vertical and lateral load testing, weighing, and aesthetics. The rules and more details about the 2020 to 2021 competition season will be announced in August. There will also be accommodations for a remote option since we are still in the midst of the, of the pandemic. AISC partners with the Association of Collegiate Schools of Architecture, or ACSA, for an annual steel design competition for architecture students. The program is intended to challenge students to explore a variety of design issues related to the use of structural steel. Students can work as individuals or as a team, and we have seen some very unique and creative projects. There are typically two categories of competition, one with a given theme that changes from year to year, and the other is an open category. The theme for the 2021 competition will be workplace wellness, which challenges students to think about how the current pandemic will shape future workplace design to keep all of the building's inhabitants safe. Last year, we launched AISC Student Clubs, which allows students to gather and form a club that is officially recognized by AISC. We encourage students at U.S. colleges and universities to create an affiliated AISC Student Club to access a variety of benefits. The student club's structure, size, and associated activities may vary, but could include engaging in educational activities, as well as networking opportunities with peers and representatives. We've seen several clubs form to support the school student steel bridge competition team. Each AISC student club is formally affiliated with AISC and can receive tax exempt status. They also receive insurance coverage for their official club activities. We tried to keep the process as simple as possible. To start a club, it only takes three students and a faculty advisor. There's an application form linked on the website to help get you started. And finally, we like to host fun contests exclusively for students. Over the past year, we hosted a scavenger hunt through Instagram, and we also held an online trivia event. These are photos from some of our scavenger hunt winners. Stay tuned for more information about a contest this fall that will be held in conjunction with Steel Day in September. So with that, just a couple more quick things before we move to the Q&A. The next educator webinar will take place on Thursday, August 20th at one o'clock central. This will be an overview of our recently updated seismic design teaching aids. This set of PowerPoint presentations has long been a staple in our teaching aid library. And we are excited to announce that they have been updated to reflect the 2016 seismic provisions. Professors Patricia Clayton of UT Austin and Matthew Etherton of Virginia Tech graciously assisted with the updates along with a few others. They will be giving an overview of the set with some highlights of the new updates and new content. And finally, just a reminder of how you can get in touch with the university program staff. You can always email universityprograms at AISC.org with any questions or inquiries. And our website is AISC.org slash university programs. Many of the things that we discussed today can be found on that portion of our webpage. You can also follow us on social media for the latest and greatest news. You can find us with the handle at AISC with, um, on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And so that gets us to the end of the structured portion of the program. And so we'll open it up for questions. Um, so if you have not done so already, you can submit your questions using the Q&A window and we will answer them as time allows. So it looks like we already have a few questions that have come in. Um, let's see. So the first question is, you know, is the educator forum available to faculty teaching outside of the United States? And the answer is the, the, faculty, the educator forum is for faculty teaching at U.S. schools, um, but you can contact us at university program um, at AISC.org with your special request, and we may be able to grant you access. Um, Next up, we have the question is, are these benefits available to professional AISC members who are also teaching STEEL part-time? And for the most part, yes. 
So the teaching aids that are available on our website um, are always available. Um, and then the desk copy program you also qualify for. Um, not necessarily the educator session at NASCC, but sometimes we can make an exception. It kind of depends on the situation. Um, so if you have any issues or, or questions about that, um, about your specific case, feel free to, to reach out to us. Um, ooh, next we have a question for Judy. Um, Judy helps write the tip sheet um, that goes out every, every month. So Judy, can you give us some insight um, into what's included in that tip sheet? that you write for AISC? Uh, sure, but first I have to give a lot of credit to Maria Manukin, who really gives all the important information about AISC programs and so on that appear in the tip sheet. But basically the steel educators tip sheet um, comes out um, approximately every month uh, during the academic year. Um, and so the main portion of it really focuses on, you know, announcements and other important information uh, from AISC for educators, um, announcements related to the STEEL conference, student programs, and things like that. Uh, and there's always a sort of a sidebar on the right-hand side where I try to feature different teaching aids that are available through uh, the teaching aids website as well as the educator forum. Um, and the, the timing of those is roughly timed with uh, what we've seen from different semester schools and when they cover different topics typically. Uh, so we might start with sort of introductory types of teaching aids um, in August, for example, and then move on to different topics. Uh, so you might have noticed that, you know, one month there might be more teaching aids uh, featured for flexural members and others uh, next month there might be or another month there might be more teaching aids focused on compression members, for example. Um, and if you can't wait for the next teaching uh, tip sheet uh, with some of those featured, uh, you can kind of go back um, into um, the file sharing section of the educator forum where you can see past issues of the tip sheet. Great. Thanks, Judy. Um, and then just a reminder, if you haven't already subscribed, there's a subscribe button on the university program's webpage um, where you can sign up to, to receive that. Um, let's see. Next question is, can we use these teaching aid materials in class notes with proper citation? And yes, the answer is absolutely yes. These are, these are for you to use and share and use in your courses. Um, so please, please use them as widespread as you would like to. Um, next question was, you know, what's the, what's the major difference between the educator forum and the rest of the edu education site? Um, so as we you know, talked about, the educator forum is kind of a, a separate site um, that requires a login, um, and that's really for collaboration among the steel, steel educator community. Um, and so it's an opportunity for you to, to upload your own resources and maybe download other resources from your peers, um, and then also has that discussion board feature. Um, the thing I'll note is that um, all of the resources that are available on the teaching aids website on the AISC website have been thoroughly reviewed um, kind of from a technical standpoint. Um, we do not go through and review everything on the, on the educator forum. So that is one slight difference, um, but you know, trust, your, trust your judgment and you can um, kind of sift through, through those. Um, and again, if, if you need access to the educator forum, you can request that through our website. Um, the next question it looks like is, um, I'd like to nominate a colleague for an educator award. What is the due date? And that's a great question. Um, you can visit the AISC website for the complete information about the nomination process. You can go to AISC.org slash awards. Um, and the nominations are due on September 4th. So you've got about a month and a half to submit those. Um, Another question is, does AISC still help universities find steel fabricators in their area to visit? Although we won't be visiting anything this year due to COVID. Um, the answer is yes. So we do have an adopt a school program. Um, so we can help you um, find a fabricator in your area to help make a connection. Um, and so um, feel free to, to reach out to us about that and we can try to, to find someone in your area who's interested in um, potentially giving you a tour, um, again, outside of COVID. Uh, but for now, you can also try the, the virtual reality visit 
um, to a steel mill. Um, those, are, those are great tours. They're about five or ten minutes. Um, give a pretty good insight um, to what goes on in a mill. And, oh, another question that just came in is, uh, do you still plan to organize the steel structure educator wor workshop in the future? Um, and yes, we do. So we, um, we tend to plan um, summer educator workshops um, every, every couple summers where we invite um, educators um, to come to one place and for a couple of days and, um, again, share resources, um, maybe go on a tour of a mill. Um, and it's, it's, it's a great opportunity, again, to, to share information and um, hear more about what we have here at AISC. Um, so, you know, again, the, the, the pandemic makes things a little bit more interesting, but we do hope to plan another one in the near future. So, so be on the lookout for that. Well, I think that gets us to the end of our questions. Um, so, again, we just, I think thank all of you for, for submitting questions and, and participating today um, and, and for, for showing up. Um, as this webinar concludes, there will be a short survey that will pop up on your screen. We ask that you would please help us out by completing that survey. We greatly appreciate your feedback and we'll take that into consideration for future events. So before we wrap up, I'd like to give one more special thank you to our guest speakers, Judy Liu, Jeffrey Kale, and Tim Mazowski. We really appreciate you joining us today and providing your insight. Uh, so thanks again, everyone, for attending today's webinar, and have a great afternoon.